Hey guys and welcome to this channel. My name is Theo and I have to confess that I never really played Pokemon in my life before. Alright, uh, I'm not really much of a gaming person in general. Growing up I played a lot of catch and hide and seek with my friends and even though I got a Game Boy Color and a Wii later on, I never really invested much time in playing games by myself. The only games I remember playing more than once were Zoo Tycoon 2, I think, and all the Sims games. I guess I just really like to build stuff. So what changed? To be honest, YouTube keeps on recommending me Pokemon gameplays and fact videos, so I got curious. I watched the anime as a child, but the graphics of the game just didn't really got me interested. I mean, it's all pixels and stuff, and everything looks so small. No offense there, it just didn't get me hooked. With Nintendo announcing the upcoming Pokemon game at the end of the year, I decided that I finally want to educate myself and play some Pokemon games on my own. So I borrowed the Switch, got some games, and was ready to dive into my first Pokemon adventure. The first game I played was Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, for a couple of reasons. First, it looked exactly as I always wanted Pokemon to look like. Bright colors, cute Pokemon, normal sized characters. Second, I heard this was a great beginner's game, so I hoped that I wouldn't feel too overwhelmed by it. And it really was the way I had imagined the game after watching the anime. I got a cute Pikachu as a starter Pokemon that liked to travel outside its ball. The catching methods were the same as in the Pokemon Go mobile game. And moving forward seemed easy and natural. You are even able to ride on your Pokemon. Maybe that's something every game has nowadays, but for me it was fun and made me change my team a lot. Not to mention the surfing ability Pikachu could learn to get you over water. They even had Team Rocket in this game, that frequently annoyed you with the plants and that you could fight against. I spent two days in this game before losing my first battle. I think that's quite amazing. And after that, well, let's say I started to struggle. Fights got annoying, and even though I know that I should, I just didn't like catching Pokemon that I already had. But at least I saw the marvelous evolving of a Magikarp into a Gyarados. The level of my opponents seemed to rise way faster than my level, which made fights exhausting since I had to run to a Pokemon Center every time I defeated one to heal my team, which took a lot of time. But this problem, let's just say it's something that got me in almost every game. So after 10 hours and losing some bluebird Pokemon I desperately tried to catch, I decided that I had enough and moved on to the second game. Pokemon Sword. This game... I still don't know if I actually like or hate it. I like the design of the world and the story they made behind it, but I got bored pretty fast with the extremely long introduction tutorial and started to hate Hop and his brother after only a couple of hours into the game. The idea with the nature zone, where you can find and actually fight all kinds of Pokemon even above your level was great, but I got frustrated with the catching system. Probably because I was used to the one in Let's Go Pikachu, but also because I didn't know that I could only catch Pokemon that were within my badge level, which made the whole nature zone kind of pointless to me. Even Pokemon that were catchable were difficult to catch from me. Either they got out all the time or ended up defeating them. By the way, no one until this point in either games mentioned to me, or at least I didn't notice, sorry if I skipped something, that I should use different balls for high level Pokemon. I just catch them with a regular one, which in Let's Go Pikachu didn't seem to be a problem, but in Sword, well, let's say I didn't go into the nature zone after a while, until someone pointed out that I should use different balls. The, I'm gonna call them mini games, before fighting in the area, were kind of nice, and I look forward to them every time. The whole Dynamax thing, though, well, I don't know. I kind of don't see the point behind it. 
but it does look cool for the first five times and then it just feels like a waste of time. It's like the game is deciding the pace of my gameplay and this I don't like at all. Another thing I didn't get at all was the order in which I was able to attack. This also confused me in Let's Go Pikachu, but in Sword it seemed way more random. Sometimes I was the first to attack, sometimes my attacks would be put back. Fighting got really stressful because of that. That's mainly why, after I got a possibility to ride a bike, I stopped fighting trainers. Which in fact doesn't get you far in the game, but I like the if I'm too fast our eyes can't lock idea so I keep on speeding through the map all the time. In Let's Go Pikachu there was an option to pet your Pikachu and feed it fruits, which kind of existed in Sword as well. Here you had some kind of camp, where all your Pokemon moved around freely and you can play with them or make some curry, using ingredients you collected. I don't know why, but Rebel kind of looks like a grumpy teenager here to me that tries to look cool. The last game I played was Pokemon Arceus. I immediately loved the kind of open world and path setting they choose and enjoyed the way you had to catch Pokemon and fight them in this game. This may sound funny, but it kind of felt the most real to me. And even though I heard some reviews that the world was ugly, I didn't feel that way. Good, I don't really have anything to compare it to, but I like the landscape and the fact that the weather changed and it became dark after a while. Setting the story in the past meant that the Pokeballs had to be made yourself and the Pokedex was just a regular notebook. And to heal your Pokemon you had to feed them or go to rest for a while. I also found out that they made an anime to Arceus, so I'm gonna probably watch that one next. By the way, if you're interested to see what kind of anime I have watched, please check out the description box. I have included a link to my anime list list. List list? I don't know. <laughs> Something else that Arceus has taught me that should have been explained by the other two games, but I kind of missed it I guess, was that Pokemon types actually matter in fight. Okay, I know this sounds stupid, but the first few games didn't really tell me about it. Hop kind of pointed out how skilled I was with using the types for my advance, but I didn't get what he meant until Akio shot me this shot. Suddenly, everything made sense. Sure, I had some kind of common sense that water Pokemon were strong against fire, but every time I had an opponent from a type that wasn't a typical element, I got confused and just sent all my Pokemon to death. Maybe it's my fault for not informing myself or searching online for a solution, but maybe the developer just thinks that this should be known by now and didn't bother to include it. I don't know, I'm probably just stupid. They should have included this in the anime, so I probably just forgot, but it took me a while to figure this out. Arceus actually got me hooked the most, because I was able to move freely and had many side quests you could do as well. But it also made me anxious, because it was basically a huge nature zone and there were a lot of stronger Pokemon that I approached and then had to run away from. So, same as thought, I tried to outrun them and riding the white deer everywhere I went. Well, and this was my experience playing Pokemon for the first time. I probably choose three not so typical games for my first try, but these were the ones I could get without investing too much money on. And if I had actually gotten a game for the Game Boy Color, I would have probably tried this one out as well. I actually thought I would get bored with the story after a while, because Pokemon is Pokemon, right? But since they were so different in the graphics, the design, the story, the start of Pokemon, I didn't feel that at all. I am thinking about getting the next generation and do a real let's play, because the open world concept just really intrigues me. If you have some games you want me to try out as well, please leave a comment. I'm more than ready to finally catch up on all the things I've missed out. And maybe even try out some games that are not so well known, maybe a bit strange or disturbing. Whatever you have, please leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to trigger the algorithm. And please consider subscribing. I will see you all in the next video. Ciao!